Hello, this is Steve Shaw, National Coordinator of Football Officials and Secretary of Rules Editor. And today we're presenting the six in our series of media videos for the 2020 season. And we're going to be looking at game action from the weekend of October 17th. Now, first point of note, scoring continues to rise. We're up to 58.6 points per game. And that's almost 2.6 points over last year. So that's something that we'll continue to watch as we go through the season. And our COVID adjustments seem to be working very well. Our expanded team area, the toss, our masking protocols for officials, our whistle protocol now seems to be working very well. So we're going to continue that and be vigilant as we go forward to keep everybody safe and healthy. So with that, let's look at a few plays from this past weekend's action. Our first play, what we're going to see is defender number two. He's going to come up and take on a lead blocker, and he's actually going to go low and block him below the waist. And so is this a legal block? What is the defense allowed to do as far as blocking below the waist? And by rule, the defense can go low five yards beyond and behind the neutral zone, extended all the way to the sideline, as long as the block is directed from the front, not from the side. And so what we see here is a legal play by this defender as it's about two yards behind the line of scrimmage. So that allows the defense to go low and block below the waist. This is a legal play. Play two is a surprise onside kick and the ruling on the field is going to be the kicking team recovered it after it had gone 10 yards. So it's going to be their ball first and 10. But let's go back and take a look at this play and, and talk about the things the kicking team can and cannot do. So first of all, we know they cannot touch the ball until it is gone 10 yards. And they did not do that on this play. And we also know that they can recover the kick after it either is touched by a receiving team player or it has gone 10 yards. And that's exactly what happens here. It goes 10 yards, and then you're going to see number 81 is going to recover it. And so good job there. But also by rule, a kicking team player cannot block an opponent until they can legally recover the ball. And so what you're going to see on this is that you're going to see a kicking team player before the ball goes 10 yards, so they're not eligible to recover yet, He's going to block a receiving team player away from the ball, and that becomes an illegal block. Now, we didn't get that call on the field, but this is a foul that replay can add on. So replay is going to come in on this and actually add this foul for an illegal block. And so we're going to go back, penalize five yards, and the kicking team is going to have to re-kick. So this is a very good alert by replay. And just a reminder that you cannot block until you can legally recover the ball. Play three is a punt play. And the kicking team players are going to try to possess or down the ball in the field of play, preventing the receiving team uh, from getting a touchback on the play. So the college rule, it does not matter the relative position of the player to the goal line just the football. So what we're going to see here, the first player, he takes off from the field of play, but the ball has clearly broken the plane of the goal line. He's going to bat it back, and so that ball is still alive. With proper mechanics, our back judge would put his beanbag down in the end zone and continue to work the play. Now, the second player's got his feet on the line. That doesn't matter. He's going to bat the ball back. It hits a third player. And finally, number 22 is going to possess the ball in the field of play in hopes of downing the ball at the one. But because the ball broke the plane, now the receiving team is going to have the option of taking the ball at the 20-yard line, which is exactly what happens on this play. Play four, we're going to get a pass across the middle. And the ruling on the field is going to be catch, fumble, and ultimately recovered by the defense. And so replay is going to come in and take a look at this and really try to determine, is this a catch fumble or is this an incomplete pass? And so what we're going to see first is we have an upright receiver and there's control of the football. And then the receiver takes a couple steps. He turns upfield. He's tucking the ball in. He begins to stiff arm a player. And then he's hit and the ball comes out. So there's definitely been an element of time and a football move here. So this is a catch fumble. 
And so Replay is able to confirm that part of the play. But Replay is also going to take a look at, is there targeting here? And so this receiver can still be considered a defenseless player. He cannot defend himself. But there's no forcible contact to the head or neck area, so no issue for targeting there. But Replay also has to look at, could this have been a crown of the helmet hit? And even though there's an indicator, you're going to see the defender, he gets his head to the side, and there's no forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. So no targeting here. They're able to confirm this play as a catch-fumble recovery by the defense. Play five, we're going to look at a throw by the quarterback and determine, is this an illegal forward pass that is thrown from beyond the line? And so what the rule says is that it is an illegal forward pass if it's thrown by an offensive player whose entire body is beyond the neutral zone when he releases the ball. So the key here is at the release point, where is the player? And clearly you can see the right foot, right ankle, really that lower part of the right leg clearly behind the neutral zone. So even if this pass is released beyond the neutral zone, this is still a legal pass. So as long as any part of that body is in or behind the neutral zone, it's a legal pass. Play six is a potential catch right near the goal line. And this is going to be a great illustration of our toe heel and the pylon rule. Now, the ruling on the field is a touchdown. And remember that the pylon is in the end zone, but it's out of bounds. So the play is dead as soon as the player touches the pylon. And remember, to make a catch, the player must get a body part down inbounds. And so what we're going to see is as the player is catching it, his right leg is up in the air. So in an attempt to get a body part down, that left leg is going to come in. The toe is going to hit first, but the heel really touches right out of bounds into that pylon. So even though the player touches the pylon and would get goal line extended, and I think the ball is probably breaking the plane of the goal line here, it isn't a catch because the body part he tried to get down, his left leg, the toe heel, when the heel in the normal stepping motion touched that pylon, it's out of bounds. And so this is an incomplete pass, and replay is going to overturn this. No touchdown, incomplete. Play seven is a pass to the boundary, and the ruling on the field is going to be a catch. And it's a very, very tight play, and replay is obviously going to come in and take a look at this. And our best look is probably from the low end zone camera, where we can see the player, his hands, the ball, the ground. It's a great shot. And so what's replay looking for? Well, obviously, getting a body part down in bounds is not an issue here, but did the player have firm control of the ball? Did the ball hit the ground? Was there any loss of firm control? Did he use the ground to help make this catch? So what we see, initially the receiver sticks the ball. He's got firm control, but then his momentum is going to carry him forward and the ball is going to touch the ground. But did he lose possession? Was there a bobble there? Did he maintain firm control as he rolled over? It's very tight. And really, I can make the case both ways. And for replay, this is the perfect example of a stands. And so we know that the rule book says that if video evidence convinces the replay official beyond all doubt that the ruling was incorrect, he can overturn it. But without such indisputable video evidence, the replay official must allow the ruling on the field to stand. This is a stand. Our final play this week is a punt play, and some plays are just busier than others. We're going to get three fouls against the receiving team on this play. Two come after a change of possession, so let's look at those first. The first, we're going to get a block in the back by number 16 right at the runner, so this is a correct call. And then we're also going to get an illegal blindside block call against number 45. He's going to hit number 42. This is a player safety rule. This is also a correct call. But the one I want to focus on is leaping the punch shield. And this is going to occur back upfield before the change of possession. And we know by rule a player cannot try to block a punt by leaving his feet and leaping into the plane directly above the frame of the body of an opponent. Now, it's okay if he tries to leap through a gap or between players, or he can jump straight up. 
But this is a player safety rule. And what you see here, very dangerous, is he's going to leap over this shield and he's going to get flipped over head over heels and actually lands, it looks like, on his head. And that's why this rule was put in there for player safety. So this is a correct call. The kicking team is going to accept this penalty because it's enforced from the previous spot, a 15-yard penalty, and is going to give them an automatic first down. Well, that's it for our plays this week, and I hope this has been helpful, and we appreciate your time invested to watch these videos. Now, week eight should be an exciting week as we get a couple of conferences coming back and joining the action. So best of luck to all, and stay safe and healthy.